Cody Rawl here. Take a look at this tree. So you've got the, the trunk here and it goes into a smaller branch patterns, right? Into each successive small branch patterns, right down to the, uh, right down to the ends of the tree where it's got these smaller branch patterns. Um, so if you can see, it's a repeating geometrical pattern. It's got self-similarity. A tree goes up branches, those branches have even smaller branches, those branches have even smaller branches. And you find all types of examples of that in nature. Everything from the smallest snowflake to mountain ranges, to things like trees, to even arteries within the body and even neurons. That self-similarity pattern has been investigated by people all throughout history. Um, in 1982, a guy named Benway Mandelbrot put out a book called The Fractal Geometry of Nature. And in that book, Mandelbrot talked about the different uh, self-similarity patterns that you find in nature. Mandelbrot's famous because he came up with this mathematical formula called the Mandelbrot set. And this thing depending on what numbers you put it into, either went to infinity or reduced to zero. And when you graph it, uh, it say uh, every number that goes to infinity is represented as black, and then every number that goes to uh, infinity is white. And when you graph that, it creates this geometrical pattern that's quite bizarre. If you zoom in on it thousands of times, you see these self-replicating geometrical patterns that are just amazing. Uh, if you do it in 3D, it gets even crazier. It's just this crazy complex geometrical pattern that you get from a relatively simple mathematical set. Now you ask, can you find fractal patterns in the brain? The answer is yes, there's a lot of different researchers that agree that there's a fractal nature to the brain. A guy named Wei Xiang right now has an entire fractal theory of the brain. You can find his talks on YouTube and I encourage you to do so. I've been looking more into a guy named Busaki who's up at the uh, New York University. I like him because he uses a lot of magnetic and electroencephalography, which is technologies that I'm really interested in. And uh, both uh, Wei Xiang and Bushaki agree that the brain has a fractal nature to it according to the loops that are found in the brain. Now, uh, if you look at the evolutionary structure of the brain, the most primitive structures are found on the basal level and the more recently evolved structures are on the top. So right at the base, maybe at the, uh, at the, right at the spinal cord, you find things like the midbrain and the thalamus. And the midbrain is responsible for re uh, regulating our internal temperature and a lot of that kind of stuff. Whereas the thalamus is sort of the central processing unit of the entire brain. The next up, you might find structures like the limbic system, which is important for emotional regulation, something that's more recently been evolved. And higher up on humans, you find the highly convoluted cortex, which is the most recently evolved structure of the human brain. So if you look at the Luvian pattern with the brain, you find this fractal structure. Um, each area of the cortex has a very specific part of the thalamus that it loops through for information processing. And as information comes in, the information progressively gets looped up to higher and higher brain structures. So, if, for example, thalamus to midbrain, thalamus to limbic system, thalamus to cortex. And with certain stimuli coming in, you get enhanced information every time you loop up. So say you see a friend of yours. Uh, at first, it might loop through the midbrain. You might just get a very basic primal uh, instinct that something's there. Next, it might be looped up even further to the limbic system. You get an emotional reaction. Is this a stranger? Is this your friend? Uh, already your brain is trying to figure that out with emotional regulation. And finally, as it loops up to the cortex, you have more of a uh, complex memory system. Perhaps you have a memory of being with this person, or you think about who's this person's relationship with my other friends, how's my relationship with this person right now, and again, the information gets increased in complexity as you go up the fractal loop. So what I wanted to do is talk about 
a uh, fractal theory of metacognition that's not very scientific, it's just a theory that I'm putting out there. But if you look at cognitive behavioral therapy, there's different levels to the way that we think. On the most basic level, we have our belief system. On that next level up, we have thoughts. On the next level up, we have actions. And on the next level up, we have an environment around us. And if we're thinking about success with New Mavericks, we want to think about how we can attack each one of these levels in order to be the most successful that we can be. The reason why I think it's fractal is because I think there's repeating patterns on each level of the metacognition. So uh, there's a lot of universal truths to success, but four that we might pick out just for this talk could be uh, uh, courage, discipline, enthusiasm, and generosity. So you're applying each one of these principles to each level of the metacognition. So let's take a simple example. Say you want to get better at public speaking. Um, you can attack it on each one of the levels. Maybe you decide to attack it on the thought level. So maybe in your belief structure, you think, I'm not a really good public speaker. Uh, I can't really public speak, but I'd like to get better. So on the thought level, maybe you can start doing self-affirmation. You can start thinking, I am a good public speaker. I am a good public speaker. I am a good public speaker. And do that day after day after day. Now, if you do that, you're probably going to build up some sort of neuronal connections in your brain that changes your belief structure, that changes the way that you think about yourself. So maybe you start thinking, I am a good public speaker. But if you think about it, that's probably sort of a delusional state. Perhaps you could even get a little bit better at public speaking just by deluding yourself into thinking that you're good at it and bringing more confidence to the table when you try it. But most people would agree that's not the best way about going about it. In all kinds of success literature, uh, usually there's an agreement that the best thing to do is take action. Because what action does is it literally puts it into your nervous system in a much more concrete way. Not only that, but it gives you feedback. So you take action. Say you join a Toastmasters club and you actually start doing public speaking. And again, at that level, you can apply the universal truths in that fractal in that fractal nature of metacognition. So you have the discipline to keep going back. You have the courage to get there in the first place. You have generosity. Maybe you're inviting other people to go or giving them uh, good props for their public speaking. And then uh, bringing enthusiasm to the table as well. So those areas that you apply it at the thinking level, now you're applying at the action level as well. And I think this would be a lot more effective because you're getting positive feedback and you get better, your skill increases. So with the increasing skill, it changes the environmental level. Now people are saying, hey, you actually really gave a good talk the other day. And then they give you positive feedback. You get those positive feedback experiences that enhance your uh, action because it encourages you to go back, continue to build that skill, changes your thinking process on that second metacognition level into thinking, wow, I can really do this. And then finally, it affects your belief structure. I am a good public speaker. So that manifests out back through the environmental level, changing your environment. And what does that mean? It changes your life. That results in changing your entire environmental surroundings, which is, which is your life. So I think that fractal theory can really apply to success in general. And if you think about it that way, maybe you'll have some new ideas about how to attack different uh, strategies to getting better at whatever niche you're going for. We have a chance to improve the lives of not just millions, but billions of people on this planet through the research that's done in this brain initiative alone. We must love them. We must help them. We must serve them because our whole success will depend on our ability to do these things. You lack fractals! That's cool. We're gonna break the barriers. Oh yeah! Oh yeah. A little doggy. Wee. I have friends. <laughs> There's a raven flying overhead.